All right, so in this one, we want to add our content or the actual generic foreign key into this post. Now, doing it the template method is, well, it's not always good even when you can do this reverse um, because sometimes it takes out the logic from the view. So what we wanna do is actually have this sort of logic in the view. So it's not gonna work this way for generic foreign keys. You actually have to do some additional things to actually get this. So I'm also gonna get rid of this um, Facebook comments. We no longer want that to show up. In fact, I'm gonna delete it completely. Uh, but now instead we want to have just comments. So I'll add P class equals the lead and we'll say comments. And we will now come in here and have a comments section here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the instance comments set. So if I refresh, uh, let's make sure our server is running, of course. And if I refresh in here, I'll now have a comment area underneath. Um, so going back into the documentation for comments and generic relations, if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see that you can use the content type manager. So this is basically getting the content type. This makes a lot more sense once we actually put it into action. So let's go ahead and jump into our sublime text and we're gonna go into the views for posts. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the content type import. So inside of views for posts, this is where we're gonna be and we wanna do First of all, from comments.models, import comment, and make sure it's all capitalized. And then we also want to import the um, contrib content type stuff, okay? So now we wanna use comments inside of a detail. So inside of post detail, we wanna put comments in here. So first of all, we'll have to do content type equals to content type dot objects, and we are going to get for model, and the model itself is the post model, right? So we wanna make sure that we're getting the content type for the post model, and then we wanna get the object ID, which is the post ID, which is gonna be instance.id. I'll explain this stuff in just a second, but then we'll just do comments equals to comments, comment.objects.filter, content type equals to content type, and then object ID equals to obj ID. Okay, and then we're gonna add this into our context. Save that, and we're gonna go back into our post, and now we have that comment actually coming through. Okay, so what's going on here? Now, if you remember back to the content types themselves, we can actually select a different model for our content types. So this is just getting us that content type of post, which is the instance or the object that we're working with. And then we actually have to get the ID that it's related to. So it's just really just saying, hey, posts.objects.get ID equals to instance.id. So it's virtually doing this exact same thing, right? And if we did comments or if we got that specific one or one of these, it would actually give us this content object, which we'll actually see inside of the template in just a second. So this is giving us a list of all the comments that are related to it. So that means in post detail, we can iterate through them. So for comment in comments, we can add a div class here. So I'll do div class equals to, well, I'll leave the actual class out for a second, but now we can have comment in here and we wanna do comment.content. And if I refresh in here, now it shows us that comment. And I can put an HR tag here, save it and refresh. And we can add another comment. So let's go ahead and do that. Save and add another. Same user, we're gonna do the content type of post, object ID of one, more data. We save that. We come back in here and refresh. And now we have another, another comment. And of course we can add a break tag underneath that and do via and this could be comment.user. We save that, refresh, and now it's gonna show us the user who did it. And we could say even the timestamp. So on comment.timestamp, because again, that's a field of the timestamp, and it shows us that. And we can use a Django time sense, like filter tag, or we could say, um, put a slash there, and then just say a go. And there we go, 
So the ordering is not the right order, which we can change in just a second, but the content itself is correct, right? And we can also put this in a small, just kind of making it look a little bit, you know, more designed basically. Um, so th there it is. That's kind of how we can render these comments out in particular. So going back into our comment model itself, we see that this content type can be anything. So that means that it can actually exist on other models as well. So if you had a model called lecture, you could actually have the same content um, coming from the comments app on lecture. And you could also have it on its own content. So you can add, add its own comment, have its own comments set, which is something we will actually talk about as well. Um, but the main thing here is using content types to actually grab certain kind of data in a certain kind of way. Now, of course, now we actually need to create comments and be able to delete them and do all those things, which is what we will do. Um, but the main part here is making sure that we can actually render these comments and that you understand what's going on. For a quick recap, what we're going to do is we're going to look back at that view and we're going to take and we're going to see here. Now, if we kept the post model inside of comments, we would do comments like this. So comments equals to comment dot objects dot filter post equals to instance, right? So it'd be the post instance itself. Um, you could do user equals to request dot user, and that would get all the user comments. So that is a valuable way to do it. Um, and, and we could also not necessarily have object ID here, but we can get rid of that object ID, and this is gonna get all of our post comments. So it's gonna be similar to post, but adding in that object ID allows us to actually grab those comments specifically. So we have to get the content type, and then get the object ID and then go ahead and use that together for these generic relations. The other nice thing about our comments themselves is we can use comment dot content object. And, I'll, and if I save that and refresh in here, um, it's gonna give us our post data. So notice it says new post. So content object, let's put this above here. And at the very top, it says new post. So new post is here new post. And then if I do that same thing, con content object dot get markdown, refresh, notice it's now repeating the content itself. So that is actually getting the post object itself. So it's the same thing as this is right here. So that's what's cool about foreign keys is then you can still get the object by that other field, which if we look into our comments, this is that other field right here. That's the actual generic foreign key because the content type is realistically the foreign key. And then we grab that object ID and then the generic foreign key combines those two things to actually get that particular object. And this will not likely fail unless, of course, your object ID is not valid. Um, so that's something else that you may wanna check. So if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.